Here are the tools we're going to need. A few hex wrenches, three, an open end wrench, and a couple of screwdrivers. Maybe a Phillips head, maybe a flat head, depending on how your sissy bar is attached. I'm going to start out by taking off, uh, just by loosening the pad, in fact. And keep in mind that your sissy bar may look like this one, it may not. This is a tall one, keeping in mind that the taller the sissy bar, the more support your, your passenger is going to have. This has is one half inch square uprights on here, and it has a little plate. Your sissy bar might be shorter, like this one, and have a full plate in it, or it might be completely open, like this sissy bar is. So we're going to start out by putting on these on the clamp caps. And the clamps are what actually hold the love handles onto the sissy bar. And because this one has the plate, we're going to open these clamps up just a little bit, slide the forward part in between the pad and the back of the sissy bar, and do the same thing with the both right and left. Open up this chrome nut, slide in the clamp system, and now these are just thumb tightened, these two chrome nuts on here. But what I am going to do is tighten the fulcrum screw in here. And the fulcrum screw is really what puts the pressure onto the sissy bar and holds the love handles solidly in place. We'll make sure that they're about even. And put on these two saddle blocks. Keep in mind that the saddle part of the block, the curved part, goes upward and we'll put on the washers and two chrome acorn nuts, one on each side. Now we're going to put the left saddle block on, put the washer and the chrome acorn nut, and again, these are going to be finger tightened because now it's time to drop in the uh, chrome cross tube. We see that these two bolts slide back and forth, and we simply drop those bolts down through the saddle blocks and position it pretty much in the center of the bike. And now we're going to put the washers and nuts beneath the saddle blocks and tighten those up hand tight. That's pretty much that. Now we're going to add the two pivot carriers. One is marked with an L and the other is marked with an R, so you can be sure that they're going on the right end. And tighten up just one of the set screws a little bit. It doesn't have to be real tight because we're just checking them for fit right now. Keep in mind that the slot on the pivot carrier faces forward. All right, those are tightened a little bit. We'll put on the right armrest. Put on the left armrest, and I'm going to just walk over here and make sure that they're parallel. And you can adjust them up and down because only one of those set screws is very tight. All right, now we're going to take the armrest off and tighten the other set screw very tight. So all four of these set screws are really clamped in there. They actually have a point on the end of them, and that point digs into the cross tube to keep them really solid. And then there's also a clamping screw underneath. So you're going to tighten up these clamping screws really, really tight. As a matter of fact, you're going to want to put some thread locker on there so that if your bike rattles like some of them do, it doesn't fall out sometime down the road. Now we're going to put a little bit of Vaseline, a little bit of grease. Uh, I'm actually going to use a little bit of chapstick on these pivot posts so that the armrests will pivot real nice and smoothly for years to come. And you're going to want to put that on every once in a while. We'll replace the armrests. Put the button head screws back in. Oops, sorry, we need to put some thread locker in each side.
little bit of thread lacquer, just a couple of drops in these threads. Now put the button head screw and the washer back in and tighten those up real well. Now, these armrests have clicked into position in the front position, and they're pretty tight. But keep in mind that if you need to tighten them up a little bit more, there's an adjustment underneath, and you simply turn that ball detent system to the right. Turn that with flathead screwdriver a little bit, and that'll make them a little bit tighter. All right, now that everything is tight on the cross tube, we'll come back and tighten up these two nuts and these two nuts. And if your bike rattles a lot, you're going to want to put some thread locker on these as well. And now everything is good and solid and you are ready to ride.